TV. Your will, your choice. Good morning. Welcome to Let's Learn Show, where we discuss anything that is worth educative. Remember, we are sponsored by Good Speed Media, Zarina School of Beauty at Gaba, uh, Corporate Fashions Boutique, and Katima Unisex Salon. Today, we are going to look at uh, the new education curriculum for lower secondary, and I'm Anit Nakanwaji right here on PTV. I'm not alone. I have a guest along with me. Madam, may you please introduce yourself? I'm Sister Florentina Sanyu, the head teacher of St. Denis Sebuguao Secondary School, Gava. Thank you, Sister. Well, uh, ordinary level is one of the formal education options that learners join after having finished the primary education and learners join senior one after having successfully passed the primary living examinations and embark on a four-year cycle covering the lower secondary that's the ordinary level right from senior one to senior four well before we collide with details we should remember that uh, the government of Uganda rolled out the new education curriculum for lower secondary in February 2020 and the main aim uh, was to meet learners with uh, skills in, in regards to practical and uh, the Minister of Education and Sports Honorable Janet Museveni in her statement to the Parliament said that the need to review the education curriculum was overdue since it had never been revisited uh, since the, educa the colonial education system was introduced. Uh, she also added on that, she also revealed that learners or, or the old curriculum was channeling out graduates with no practical skills to meet the demands in the labor market. Well, before we go any further, sister, do you think this was the right time to come up with a new revised education curriculum? Yes, I feel it's the right time because this curriculum was long overdue coming. Because we have a lot of graduates who, who are just searching for jobs. But when we start a curriculum which equips the children with skills such that even as they study, they can work and fend for themselves because these days we have many single parent children and we also have children with no homes, eh? homes headed by children with no parents. So this is the right moment for us to embark on the competence-based curriculum to help to equip our children with this lifelong skills which are going to help them to earn a living and to be self-reliant in life. Okay, thank you, sister. Well, in this new curriculum, we can see that sub subjects were reduced in number and some of them took different forms. For instance, commerce was combined with accounting to come up with entrepreneurship education. So sister, uh, how has this affected the teachers of various subjects that were integrated to form up new ones? Now we have had to retool the teachers, eh? but a commerce and accounts teacher is easily retooled into an entrepreneurship teacher because entrepreneurship is actually commerce and accounts are course units within the entrepreneurship subject. So it has not been very difficult, but we have what we call continuous professional development and the teachers get workshops. We analyze the teacher's training needs and we give them workshops according to their training needs. So we have had to retool some of the teachers to see that they fit into the new curriculum. Well, thank you. Like, as part of the old education curriculum for lower secondary, we saw that ladders were assessed timely. How is 
the assessment in this new curriculum? Do they receive tests on a weekly, monthly, or termly basis? Now, the learners, this time they are assessed every day. Every moment they are in school, assessment is ongoing, and we call it cumulative assessment. Now, when they are in class, these days we don't give them notes like in the olden days. The teacher comes, introduces the topic, asks the learners what they know about that topic. Then they share in groups about what they know. Then the teachers adds in, it gives them some information, some more knowledge about the topic. They sit and discuss in groups. Then in their groups, whatever they come up with, the answers they give the teacher, the teacher beefs on, on, up on the answers, and the children write their own notes about what they would like to remember about the topic. The teacher doesn't give the notes. But at the end of the day, the teacher checks out the students' books to say that at least someone has written something about the topic instead of leaving those who are lazy not to do anything at all. The teacher ensures that he or she checks out the, teach the children's books to see that they've done work. But the marking, what you were talking about, exams and so on, it's continuous because the group work is evaluated by the teacher and the children, they get their assessment marks at the end. But we don't give the terminal tests, but every work they do, even the project work they do, even the activities of integration they do after the lessons, all of those are watched, closely watched by the teachers and the teachers award the children as they learn. They award them, they grade them as they learn. And there is no one who fails as long as everyone has fully participated in the lesson. Everyone earns a mark. Okay, thank you. Before we leave that, has this uh, method of assessment been helpful to these students or it has otherwise made them lazy? Now this method of assessment is very helpful because now the children are very active in class. They are all eager to learn and they come up with the ideas eh, which even the teacher wouldn't have thought of. So they are actually using their abilities to see that they gain something out of the learning situation. And every student is eager to contribute to the learning situation. Okay, thank you. According to the National Curriculum Development Center, students are supposed to undertake four practical projects per term, making them 12 annually. And by the time they reach senior, th senior four, they, they are supposed to have undertaken 36 uh, projects. So, so far, because I know uh, the, the curriculum now is, is the one that we are following. So far, how is the success? Now this is quite successful because these children are eager to try out whatever they learn in class. And uh, the teachers have, have been timetabled in such a way that the subjects which are going to do the project this term, they know what they are going to do and they start on it right from the beginning of the term. For instance, when you go around our compound, you see the agriculture projects, you see the projects for fine art, the crafts the children are doing. And in the performing arts, the children are actually training to start their own school band. And this is all because of the new curriculum. I guess those practical uh, projects are supposed to be graded as well. How is the grading scheme for them? Now the, the teachers grade the students as they, do, as, as they perform their work in the groups. Then we have the Directorate of Industrial Training which is going to give our children certificates 
according to according to the skills they've attained in the different projects now we have those students who are participating in the welding they will get their certificates in 2023 because our school is already registered under the directorate of industrial training so even the people who are participating in the band who are learning to play the instruments they they learn the band instruments and then the the guitars and the keyboards they are also going to be assessed by dit uh, uh, during well, when they are in senior three then in senior four they will do the final exam by uneb and these things they do now we contribute 20 percent to their final mark uneb exams will only be contributing 80 percent but that is also still under debate because what we are doing now is much more than what would they would do in the final exam so we are lobbying to see that at least it contributes 50 50. the continuous the cumulative assessment should contribute 50 percent and then the final exams which they sit like the traditional exams should also contribute only 50 percent Okay, thank you. Uh, before we go any further, we see that uh, subjects at uh, the lower secondary level reduced. How many uh, subjects should Form 1 and Form 2 students do? Now, each student in Senior 1 and Senior 2 should only do 12 subjects. But when the students have just come in in Senior 1, because they've, they didn't have some of these subjects in primary, in Term 1, we make sure that everyone does all the 17 subjects we do in the school. They get a feel of them. Then they choose their electives when they are in Term 2, Senior 1. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we see that uh, the curriculum for lower secondary was uh, revisited or revised. What was the main aim of coming up with this revision? Now the main aim of coming up with a new curriculum was to help to equip our children with the skills eh, which are going to help them to survive in this competitive world. Eh? Because originally when they used to study the Canadian prairies, they would never visit Canada to do something about the Canadian prairies. But now we teach them things which they can draw from so that they, they undertake projects which are going to help them in life. For instance, the children who are engaging in the crafts now, they are making shoes and the bracelets, and beadwork but they sell out those things to their parents to their relatives and some eventually after school they'll start selling them to other people in the community to earn a living now for instance our school band has just started but their parents who are eager to hire it to perform their functions and in that way children will also be making money that also happens in their agriculture projects. When they grow the vegetables, we buy them as a school and they help us to beef up the diet of the children. Oh, thank you. Well, the State of Youth Report 2019 by Center for Policy Analysis revealed that majority of the students lacked more practical skills and 50 percent of the graduates uh, claimed that the education they had they had attained didn't train them to fit into the labor market but instead train them to become job seekers other than becoming job creators so sister uh, do you think this new curriculum will help us to reduce the number of unemployment among youths in Uganda? I believe, if handled well, this new, new curriculum is going to put an end to unemployment because everyone will be a job creator. Hmm? Everyone will have the skills to create his own or her own job. For instance, the children also, they divide 
the rubbish eh? into grade, uh, degradable and that which is non-degradable. Eh? And they make farmyard manure out of the degradable material. So instead of looking for fertilizers, eh, they are already making their own farmyard manure. So I think by if this curriculum reaches up to senior six, then we will have many more home cottages eh, because there are children here who also make brick, uh, make briquettes, hmm? and they use the briquettes instead of charcoal. They just make them out of cow dung and uh, charcoal dust. Eh? And they make those briquettes and they are more, they even spend a long time on the sigiri than the usual charcoal. So when children go out and do exactly what they've been, they've learned to do in school, because actually they are the ones who even bring all the ideas eh, of what they do in this competence-based competence curriculum. Children are, are taught, are helped to become critical thinkers and creative. Eh? They are very innovative and very, very creative. Now we have the teacher who teaches the crafts, but it's the children who bring the, the designs for the shoes, for the belts, for the bracelets. Eh? It is the children who, who bring their own designs. So I hope there will be no unemployment when we teach all our children to do things for themselves to improve their skills and to develop their different inborn abilities. Well, thank you, sister. So still on the practical projects, are students supposed to choose for themselves? Like for me, I want to do hairdressing and uh, fashion design, or is the school that dictates for them? Sure, the children choose for themselves what they would like to do and what they think they're doing best. Eh? The teacher only guides them, but the children choose for themselves. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, the discussion is open to you, our viewers. You can bring in your opinions uh, on our WhatsApp on 0756 43 uh, after uh, a short break, we're going to see what will the new curriculum show the deficiencies in the old curriculum. Let's have a short commercial break. We'll be right back. PTV, your will, your choice. We'll be back from the break. You're still watching a Let's Learn show with me, Anit Nakanoji, and we are still discussing about the new education curriculum for lower secondary. Uh, well, the discussion is open to you. The question at hand is, will the new curriculum show the deficiencies in the old curriculum? You can uh, send your opinions via our WhatsApp on 0756 43 11 09. As a sister, do you also think that uh, the new curriculum will show the deficiencies in the old curriculum? But before you even go to that, as you try to make a comparison between the old and the new curriculum, do you see that there are things we should, which were in the old curriculum that we should bring into the new one? <coughs> Now the subject content of most subjects has been maintained in the new curriculum. But the new curriculum is more practical oriented. Eh? It builds the skills of the children. It nurtures their critical thinking. And it helps them to be better what? To be self-reliant people. Even as they're still in school and after school. So we have not thrown away everything which was in the old curriculum, we have maintained the knowledge, eh? the knowledge which was there, the, the content, the subject content. For instance, in biology, we don't drop anything at all eh? because biology is part and parcel of us. It is only in geography where we are dropping a few topics so that we teach something which is relevant to the children here in their own setting. 
but we have maintained the subject content in the old curriculum, but we've made it more learner-centered. The lessons are more learner-centered, and they're based on, and we, or the children now learn the relevance of what they learn in class to their real life setting. That is basically what, the change within the curriculums. The old curriculum content has been maintained, but the way we impart the knowledge is what has changed. Eh? We are letting the children learn from what they know and learn what is useful to their lives and do projects which help to enhance their lives, building on the knowledge they receive in class. Oh, thank you, sister. We see that uh, this new curriculum is basically full of uh, practical projects. And, you know, practical things need certain raw materials. So who is to provide these raw materials for the learners? Now, the learners themselves are the primary people to look for the materials. And they look for the materials from within their environment. For instance, when you are making farmyard manure, we pick the leaves from the compound, we pick the papers from the compound, we burn those non-degradable material, but then the leaves and the other litter, the grass which we cut, we put it in a place, we add cow dung, all the dung from the animals, eh? and we make what? We make farmyard manure. Now that doesn't need anyone to get materials from far away or to buy anything. You don't buy anything when you're going to make farmyard manure. Everything you just pick from your environment. So we are teaching the children to use what is within their environment as much as possible to come up with better things. Hmm? And we are also teaching them to add value to whatever is around them to come up with something new and something more useful. For instance, when they are learning to make the shoes, they start with cutting paper boxes. So each one at your home, you are supposed to own a pair of scissors. And you come with it to school only on the day you have that lesson. For what? For crafts. To help you to cut the, <coughs> to cut the things you use to make the shoes. So basically the school provides only that which may be very difficult for the child to get, but we encourage them to get whatever they use from within the environment. And these things are there in our environment. Because the paper boxes they use, the people of the shops, when they sell the things, they throw away the paper boxes. So we use those paper boxes to teach the children to learn how to make the shoes. Then it is still those uh, cement papers, eh? the, the, the papers from which they get the cement for building. Those are the ones they use when they are learning to cut fashions for dresses. And when they come, when they start using cloth, the first item the child makes, the child makes an apron. It is the apron for you to use when you're doing work at home. Eh? So you come with your one meter material, that's not very expensive for a child to get. So we encourage them to get their own what? Their own materials to come and use in the different projects they do. Well, thank you, sister. Now we see that St. Denis Sebugao is uh, urban-centered. Now, do you think in any way this new curriculum will affect uh, schools located in uh, rural, basically in rem remote areas? Now the schools in remote areas have many more resources than the urban schools. Eh? Here in the urban school, you might find that the shopkeepers sell those paper boxes. In the village, you will find when they just throw them away. Now in the village, you have the trees, you have the what? The villages are richer than the urban centers for someone to learn how to use the environment to improve a livelihood. So they are not at a disadvantage at all. Okay, thank you. Well, we heard that. 
these students uh, for lower secondary are no longer being given notes. So how do they go about it? Like, how do they revise? And is there any method used to train them how to take their own simple notes? Now, taking notes is not what keeps something in your memory, but the practice they're doing is what helps them more. Now we teach them a concept, they understand the concept, write down eh, what they've understood, that's what they write down. They don't write down what the teacher understands for them. They write down what they personally understand. Now when we introduce the concept, we ask them how many of them already know about the concept. They give their contributions. Then they get into their groups. Eh? They share what they know about the concept. Then they, they present in plenary what they know about the concept. And the teacher fills in if there are some gaps, there are some things they've not talked about the concept. Then the teacher gives them an activity of integration eh? to integrate the knowledge, the content, into what happens in, real, in the real world. Eh? Then when they integrate the two, that is a better understanding of something than taking notes to cram them. So they understand better and they will not forget those things because they practice them. They put them into practice so they can't forget them. You cannot forget that when a, a plant flowers, the flower looks like this. Can you forget that? Mm -hmm. hey. Well, thank you. We see that this new education curriculum for lower secondary trains learners to, to think critically about anything other than cramming. Uh, well, we see that ICT or com computer is a practical subject. And I've seen around that you people have many students. So is, uh, are the equipments or the computers that you have enough to award these students with the practical skills as, par as far as computer training is concerned. Now, even when the computers are not enough, our senior two class has been very creative. They, they've come up with a concept of teaching computer without computers, eh? learning computer without computers. So they got paper boxes. They made out the different parts of the computer and demonstrated for the parents. Eh? They even demonstrated for, they first demonstrated for their colleagues. Then they demonstrated for the parents when we were giving them the sensitization workshop on the lower secondary curriculum. And the parents really realized that we can teach computer without computers. So by the time they went into the computer lab to touch the actual computer, after these dummy computers which they had made, a dummy keyboard, a dummy, without those dummy parts of the computers. When they reached the computer lab, even the parents who had, who had never touched a computer were able to switch on the computers and start. Eh? So the parents also realized that we can teach computer without computers. And when someone gets the opportunity to get to the computer, then they already know at least the parts of the computer and how you connect the computer to the power source. Well, thank you, sister. Uh, remember, you can join the discussion on our WhatsApp on 0756431109. And the question at hand is, will uh, the new curriculum show the deficiencies in the old one? Uh, well, we've talked uh, much about it. And what do you think is the way forward in like in this new curriculum? Now the way forward in the new curriculum is for the teachers to prepare well for their lessons and at least be there to supervise every activity the child does. So we shall expect the teachers to stop part-timing in other schools and be fully involved in the teaching and learning in one school so that they can properly follow up the children. And good enough, 
or the Education Service Commission is right now interviewing new teachers to beef up the old group so that we are many because the children we are teaching are many. The, the, best, the, <clears throat> the challenge we've been having is that our classes are too big. Even when you give the children group work, eh, it's so hectic for one teacher to supervise 100 students. Eh? So those 100 students, if you gave them big groups, they would be 10, 10. And you have 10 groups in a classroom. Eh? And you have to attend to each group effectively. That is the only snag. Eh? We just uh, appeal to our ministry, at least to, to the public service, eh? to enroll many more teachers, because the teachers are, are out there in the field. Every university in Uganda trains teachers, so the teachers are out there. We need more teachers to attend to the big numbers of the children we have. But the new curriculum is the best way to go. It's going to equip all of us with the skills to be self-reliant and self-sustaining. And before anybody knows it, everyone will have reached middle class status income. Well, thank you, sister. And uh, now via our WhatsApp, Isaac Tayewa has said, in my opinion, the only way the new curriculum can equip learners with practical skills is when the trainers in schools teach practical subjects practically. Sure. Teaching computer skills to students without demonstrating on a computer makes computer uh, a hoax to the learners. Similarly, the woodwork class does not make more sense if there are no wood and equipment for practice. And Sarah Nabilia says, another important thing which I think the curriculum is not clear about is the ability of learners to make decisions on what they want to be taught. Many times the mode of teaching has been teacher-centered, which makes the teachers to have all the leverage of determining what is to be taught and denying the learners an opportunity to participate in determining what skills they should be taught. Uh, well, Tumsime Ronald says, being aware of the gender stereotypes on science and practical subjects, I propose that the female students be prioritized by the trainers while teaching these practical subjects and be given all the necessary support they deserve. In fact, there should be deliberate efforts by the stakeholders in education to e equip the girl child with practical and soft skills which will enable her to quickly join the labor market so as to reduce her socioeconomic vulnerability. Well, those were the opinions from different people via our WhatsApp. And before we, we conclude, Sister, may you give us some closing remarks, especially in regards with our topic at hand? Thank you very much. Now, the new curriculum is a very good curriculum, and it is actually like the Cambridge curriculum, the international curriculum. All we need to do, all of us, we need to be vigilant, do exactly what we are supposed to do, to guide the children, to develop their skills, to acquire the knowledge they need to acquire and build on it to improve their environment. Eh? You see, when, when you, you inspire them to think critically, they'll simply realize eh, what the society need is, and they'll also try their lev level best to hatch an idea of how to solve that society problem. Hmm? Now, people may say we have litter around. Eh? And they say, eh, chibuga chijama. But who dirtens it? So we start in our school. School is dirty. What should we do? We should have a cleanliness alert. Whenever you find a piece of paper, you pick it. When visitors come, they will not even know that children of St. Dennis use paper because everyone puts the paper in the dustbin where it is supposed to be. So it is up to us 
to be able to guide the children, to do the right things, and also to realize the usefulness of whatever they do. Now, if you learn about a balanced diet, automatically, and you even learn about the hygiene, automatically you prevent most of the diseases which disturb us. Eh? Because most of them are due to poor feeding, eh? not getting the right diet, and the others are due, due to poor hygiene. Eh? But if you teach the children the value of uh, being hygienic and the value of having a balanced diet, then we shall have even less sick people in our country. Hmm? So let us work together and help the youths to develop their schools. Let us give them a chance to tell us exactly what they would like to do and also encourage them to do what they do well, to do it best. Hmm? Then we shall be a happy nation. Well, thank you, sister, for your time. Hope uh, to host you next time or any other time. Uh, well, it has been Let's Learn Show. Remember, we're here every single Monday as we discuss different topics that are worth educative, where we get anything we can learn from. Uh, it remains PTV. You can join us uh, via social media platforms. On YouTube, it's PTV Official. And on Facebook, it's PTV Live. You can always join the discussion via our, our WhatsApp on 0756431109. It has been uh, Annette Nakanwaji, and hopefully you will join us next time. Remember, we are sponsored by Goodspeed Media, located at Mark India. Zarina School of Beauty located at Gaba. You can contact them via 0756 884 83 93. And Corporate Fashions Boutique located in Bunga. You can contact them on 0780 83 39 53. And uh, I've been, my hair has been styled by Kati My Insect Salon at Mark India. Hope to see you next time. Have a blessed week. PTV, your will, your choice.